you've heard of the Ender 3. You might own one, and maybe you're looking to buy one. Maybe you saw one and thought, oh, that's actually affordable for a 3D printer. But the Ender 3 is wildly outdated, and this is what you should get instead. I've had an Ender 3 for about six months now. From the start, I've constantly had to tinker with it, and I thought that's just what you have to do with 3D printers. Um, I, I wish somebody had told me that's not the case. It wasn't until I got a different 3D printer that I realized you shouldn't have to fiddle with it every single print. I mean, will the Ender 3 print detailed stuff? Sure. But you have to mess with it a lot. And for me, it takes several starts and stops and adjustments and tinkering and this and that and blah blah blah. I've upgraded most of the functioning parts on my Ender 3 and I still have to mess with it. It's still a pain to print with. And there's plenty of people out there that'll tell you that, you know, you just need to fix your z-axis or do this or you know make sure the beds level or this or that whatever but I've done all that and it still doesn't work and you know what if I want a printer that just works well this is what I got this is the longer 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 LK5 Pro and you can see it's a very similar style to the Ender 3 However, it does a lot of things right that the Ender 3 does very wrong. First off, the longer runs very quiet. I forget that it's running most of the time because the only noise that that ever makes is the filament roll moving. The Ender 3, on the other hand, sounds like a freight train trying to take flight. There, you should be able to hear that. Second, I've only ever had to tram the bed once. I've only had to completely level it one time, and sure, I've made some small tweaks here and there on the first layer, but, you know, that's to be expected. But even still, it's held its position pretty well for the last month. The Ender 3 needs to be leveled after every single print, and usually takes a bunch of tweaking after leveling. And I'm currently watching the Ender 3 fail on a very easy print. So that's cool. Four layers deep and it is already aggressively messing up. We're just gonna go ahead and cancel that. As you can see, the Ender 3 has printed a perfect Pringles potato chip. Well, I guess that brings up the point of the Ender 3 constantly fails. So that's just more proof that the Ender 3 fails a lot. Everything was perfectly level, brand new nozzle on it, everything just got cleared. Everything was right on it. And it still messes up. Look at that bottom, that's sweet. Anyways, where were we? Yeah, Ender 3 needs to be leveled after every single print, and it still fails, even after you do a bunch of tweaking to it. So, you know, that's cool. Anyways. The, uh, the longer isn't constantly going through nozzles or anything like that. I've been running this thing for about a month straight. I haven't had to change the nozzle on it once. The Ender, uh, every two, maybe three prints, assuming that I can get them to work, it clogs up and it just, it doesn't run very well. The general maintenance and the upkeep on the Ender 3 is ridiculous, whereas the longer, it just works. Also, Longer has so much bigger of a print bed than the Ender 3. I, I'll show you an example of the difference between the two. Um, and it, it prints small things just fine as well. Um, I could fit my entire Ender 3 machine on that. This Anycubic Cobra Neo is the same size as my Ender 3 and you can see the size difference between the two. Obviously, this one is a lot bigger. I can fit this whole thing on top of the build plate right there. 
all of those things could just be, you know, something that I'm doing wrong. So what are some things that the longer has that the ender doesn't? Well, it's got a filament runout sensor, a touch screen, dual axis Z rods, and stabilizing braces. That stops everything from moving and shaking and going all kinds of crazy. If you are interested in getting an Ender 3, Amazon has them on sale right now for I think 169 bucks. I'll have a link for that down below. I'll also have an Amazon link for the longer LK5 Pro, which I think is better anyways. As of right now, you can get the longer LK5 Pro 3D printer for $291.20, but if you hit the apply $20 coupon, get it for $271.20. That is $100 more than the Ender 3, but it is 100% more worth your time to get that instead of the Ender 3. If you are on more of a budget and want to get something closer in price to the Ender 3, you're going to want to go with the Anycubic Cobra 2 Neo, which Again, I will put a link for this down in the comments below. Um, it's got direct drive extruder, auto bed leveling, um, all kinds of good stuff. Smart Z offset, all that jazz. I've got the Anycubic Cobra Neo right here. Um, that thing has been running great. Um, however, I bought it used at an auction and it wasn't in great condition to start off with um, it wasn't in great condition to start off with and the heat bed started giving me issues so I don't know if it's a thermistor or if I need to replace the entire heat bed or whatever if I need to replace the heat bed I'm probably just gonna upgrade to the Cobra 2 got more stuff and uh, uh, should work better but I printed a lot of great stuff with that um, I never really had to do any kind of adjustments with it or anything um, you might just have to adjust the Z offset a little bit but works fine if you want me to go into more detail about the Anycubic Cobra let me know um, probably gonna end up getting the Cobra 2 here pretty soon anyways so if you want me to do a review on that, let me know. Or if you want me to do a side-by-side -side of that with the Ender 3 or with the longer, Longer, let me know. Um, links for everything will be down below. If you got value from this video, give me a like. That would be awesome. Um, I'm going to put a video for you to watch over here and click over here to subscribe to the channel. All right. Thanks. I've had an 